Welcome back to Ted's Trick Shop. We've been doing a lot of prep work to the dinghy, and we're going to show you what we've done today. We've, we've taken care of a lot of the loose paint and paired that out with a fairing material. We've got all the wood sanded on the boat and we have it taped up to keep it clean. Today we have a special trick shop guest who is our ship's right engineer, master carpenter, uh, Martin, and he's going to show us how to make a template for a new seat. After scraping up all of the, the loose paint on the bottom, we use a, a product called Evercoat Formula 27. It's very much like a Bondo, and we fair that on it to make it smooth. And I'm going to show you how I do that. So I just use a small piece of cardboard to mix the, the Formula 27 on. And just put, put down what you think you're going to need. And then you put your hardener to it which is really just a line across the top is about what you need mix it real well then we're going to use a bondo spreader you're just going to take it and smooth it over your imperfections like so you want to get it as smooth as you can but you want to keep it full The smoother you get it, the less sanding you're going to have to do. It's really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And that's, that's pretty much it. Now we'll let that dry and we'll bring Martin in to start working on the pattern for the seat. So this is the old seat and as you can see it's in pretty bad shape. Martin is going to show us how to make a template to build a new seat. Yeah, this seat's pretty rotten. I don't know we could use it for a pattern. Um, yours might be in even worse shape than this, so I'm going to take this out and uh, show you how to make a, a spider pattern for a new seat. It's pretty accurate. Okay, so we're going to use some one-inch door skin. It's been ripped down, it's been used before, you can reuse this many times to make various patterns. It's going to be glued together with a hot milk glue gun. We can take this in position so it doesn't move while we're getting our pattern together. It's easy to cut this uh, door skin, you just use a box cutter and score it and crack it. and take a tape measure to make sure that we're making these parallel. Okay, so we have a few parallel lines from the thwart ships. Now, we tag these together to make sure they stay where we want them. Okay, so we do this on both sides to make it uh, quite stiff and to give us the shape both sides, which will be different when two sides of a whole are the same. Now we're going to strip out for the centerboard trunk so that we know where that goes. As the whole sides are curved, we need to mark on the sides the curve that we're going to have on the end of the seat. So we need to mark the curvature of the hole here so that we get this quite precise on the seat, which will give us strength from side to side. So here it's approximately one quarter of an inch. Here it's approximately three sixteenths. We mark this on here. This is one eighth. 
So this is zero. So we mark this on here so that when we lay this out on a piece of wood, which is going to be one whole piece on this seat, and not two pieces as it was before, we can mark this and we can draw the curvature on it so that we can cut it at that angle. So this seat was very narrow here and was easily broken. And it was in two pieces, there was a joint in the middle. So this time we're going to make this in one whole piece of ply so that it's stronger. Also, I'm going to add to the outsides of this to make it a little bit deeper. But I can do that afterwards by measuring. This is not necessary to make a pattern for. This hole is going to be cut into the piece of plywood, so it has to be quite accurate. Also, there is a slot underneath here that a uh, cover goes into here to stop water coming up through the, through the uh, box. I will brace this to make sure that it holds its shape. This is our pattern, we're just going to lift it off and we will lay this on a sheet of plywood and use it to get our shape so that, and so that everything lines up and fits. And there's our pattern. We will line this up on the plywood so that we get the most pleasing uh, uh, grain pattern that we want if we have a choice out of it. So we can move it and twist it and, and put it where we want also lining up the grain with the width of the seat. Alright, so thanks Martin for coming out and making the, the pattern for the seat for us. We're excited about seeing how it's going to turn out and um, we'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, so I'll uh, come back with some more material later. Alright, well thanks again. We'll be moving on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to sand this the spot that we fared and you do want to wear a mask to keep the dust out of your face and your nose um, and we're just going to use a palm sander to do that and then we'll clean it up and get ready to prime. So we're just going to dust it off a little bit I like to just use an old paintbrush as a duster, and that way we can we can see if we have it smooth. Um, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent smooth because we're actually going to put a non-skid material on here, so this looks uh, smooth and and clean. And now we can get all the dust out of the boat and move on to priming. Okay, so I've got my gloves on to protect my hands, and now I'm just going to use paint thinner to wipe the entire boat out, get the rest of the dust out of it, and any contaminants that may be on the, the fiberglass so it'll be ready to prime. We're going to use a super tough pack cloth just to get any dust off that we may have missed. Just wipe it over the, the surface and it will pick up any leftover dust. made by Rust-Oleum. It's a marine coatings primer for uh, wood and fiberglass above the water line. Um, so we're just going to mix it up, see if we need to thin it any, and we'll go from there. It looks to have a pretty good viscosity, so I think I'll just go with it like that rather than adding any thinner to it. 
and we're just going to use a Purdy All Paints brush for any brush work that we need to do. The roller that I'm going to use to apply with is called a Flock Foam Roller. They work very good. They lay the paint down nice and smooth. Okay, so we're going to start on the top surface areas and then work down from there. So I just want to cut this in a little bit to the edge and then I can roll the rest of it. Make sure you, you roll it out so that it's good and smooth and even. Don't want to have a lot of real thick primer anywhere that we have to sand off later. Just make sure that you fill it in good, all the cracks and spaces. You want to be sure to do your priming and your painting in a well ventilated area because it does have a rather strong odor to it. We'll do the front of the seat here and that way once we start the sides We'll just work into that and it'll dry nice and even without a bunch of lines in it. Spraying the primer would be much faster, but then you also have all of the overspray going into the environment. So we like to do it this way. It's a lot cleaner. And you can do it just about anywhere without having to worry about the overspray from spraying it. And if you do it nice and smooth and even, it will come out just as good as spraying it. Okay, now we're ready to begin priming the sides and we'll work one side at a time down to the middle and then go down the other side. So when you're rolling, if you start a little bit away from your last line, it's easier to bring your paint into that as opposed to starting right next to it and trying to move your paint this way. And then we'll just roll it out with good coverage. And then we'll do what's referred to as back rolling. And that's where you roll it back into what you've already done to ensure that you have a nice even finish. So all the priming is done. It looks really good. Now we'll let it dry and cure good for a couple of days and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So be sure to subscribe and like and tune in next time when we begin the painting process. And that's how we do it at Ted's Trick Shop.